Old School Lane Casual Chats is brought to you by OldSchoolLane.blogspot.com and is associated with Channel Frederator, Manic Expression, The Comic Book Cast, and The Araminta Show. new episode of casual chats i am patricia and i am here with a very special guest uh somebody that we interviewed five years ago if you can believe it so we have the creator of hey arnold dinosaur train ready jet go and uh, here to promote the hey arnold ultimate collection we have uh craig bartlett welcome back craig hi hi (laughs) so please tell us a little bit more about the hey arnold ultimate collection that's great. It's got uh, the entire series, so 100 half hours of uh, all of Hey Arnold, and it's got the two movies, Hey Arnold the movie and the Jungle movie, and uh, it even has the original Arnold uh, little claymation short film I made called Arnold Escapes from Church, and then it's got the Arnold original pilot, which I'm really happy about because... Uh, that that original pilot has a really cool art direction of its own and and hand lettered credits that I did in pencil and I think Carol Wyatt inked so <laughs> it's a good collection. Yeah, yeah. Um, we actually do have a question from Aaron Meta who says, "Is this pilot the exact same pilot as featured in Harriet the Spy, or is it something completely different?" It's um, the one that was shown on the front of Harriet the Spy is like a five or six minute version of it and this is the original pilot which runs more like eight minutes so Ooh, okay. yeah so for anybody who has seen the harriet the spy version this is even this is the extended version <laughs> nice nice that's great so um yeah i'm actually curious about like any other features that are going to be in this um in the collection i do think that there's some behind the scenes discussion about yeah. the jungle movie yeah, my favorite among those extras that are in there is one where uh, Rami Muskies and I unbox uh, the big box of Jungle Movie development art that we had done in like 2000, 2001. And so it's 15 years later that we're taking it out of this box and it's really fun. Nice. I remembered everything. It was amazing. Like, I was like, oh, my God, I remember every one of these. <laughs> the cool thing, too, is, like, in that box, there were sequences that ended up being in the final Jungle movie. Uh, Brainy's uh, little dance that he does with the pan pipes. Yeah. Well, we, that was in the box. And we were like, hey, look, here's the whole sequence. It's boarded. <laughs> <laughs> so did you rely on your memory alone, or did you look back at the previous drafts that you had in order for you to rewrite the draft? Because I know that in a previous interview that you did, that you wanted to start off from scratch and incorporate some new things that you didn't do the first time. Yeah, for sure. We When we started again, I wanted to start from scratch. But um, I had... I kind of kept everything, like like that art that got boxed up. I bet Ramey and I both had probably copied a lot of that stuff, too, and scanned it before we put it away. And uh, the script, I had all the drafts. But i tell you the truth, I didn't read, before I started writing uh, this version, I, I didn't read the old drafts, even though 
Uh, someone did. Remy, Remy said he reread our last draft that we had done, which was about draft six back in you know two thousand one or two. Yeah, and he said that was great. What a great script! And I was like, well, cool. I'm glad. I'm glad that seemed cool, but um, I'm still going to not read it. I'm just going to start again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Considering that, um, you know, this was a project like uh, 15 years in the lineup that, you know, a lot of people have been wanting to see. And the fact that you were able to remember at least most of what you wanted to do in the first place is pretty admirable. Uh Yeah, it was just really that story was just really in me. You know, I mean, we we've been thinking about and talking about that saga of like what happened to his parents and what he was going to do about it. We did. We talked about that since God, you know, the mid 90s. So <laughs> it it uh, it's cool. It's right. It was it was great to finally have a chance to really do it. I'm actually curious. I know that the um, one of the reasons that you wanted to create Skyrap was to try to get back at Nickelodeon's good graces to see that if the possibility of the Jungle movie could happen. So mm-hmm. when was the when was the point in which you were like, um, you know, they they said, okay, Craig, we'll let you do the Jungle movie. Was it at that point that you decided to scrap Skyrat, or would you further along in the development in which you decided, you know, I can't do all these projects at once because. I believe this was before you even did Ready Jack Go. Yeah, I think so. We, it probably that's right. We were probably working on the the jet pilot um, at the time that I was developing Skyrat. What happened? Yeah, I developed Skyrat for them for a year, and um, they decided to go with the Jungle movie. So that was actually moving ahead and going into production, and and they just decided they just were going to drop Skyrat. So I would have kept doing it and. I would have made it if I could, but it, it is true that that would have been on top of trying to do the Jungle movie. But um, they actually, Nickelodeon basically passed on Skyrat. So that, that's why that didn't happen. Yeah. So um, the last time that you were on our show, you were doing Skyrat at the time. And there wow. were some things that um, you were um, not discussing more in depth though because you were like wanting to hold in, back information. In the middle of it? Yeah, exactly. You were in the middle of it. <laughs> So, um, the one wow, thing that's amazing, um, that's amazing. Cause that was five years ago. Yeah. You were on our show in 2013. Holy cow. That's amazing. Five years went by yeah. and, uh, you know, the, that's amazing to me that that was five years ago that I was working on Skyrack. Cause yeah, I, I worked on it for a year. I did, I drew a bunch of stuff. I wrote a bunch of stuff and yeah, development, you go through draft after draft of these pitches. Mm hmm. So, I mean, it was it was fun, but I, they, you know, then ultimately they just didn't want to do it. I, I can understand. I mean, you know, for, you know, uh, you know, maybe for Nickelodeon, um, knowing the whole, um, knowing the whole movement of wanting to see the Jungle movie again. And then you were coming back saying, you know, hey, I want to pitch Skyride over to you guys. And then, uh, you know, with the whole, um, you know, hashtag, uh, you know, bring back Hey Arnold with for the Jungle movie and stuff like that. So I guess... <laughs> You know, I guess it was a bigger priority, which, you know, I can I can definitely sure. respect. I definitely respect yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, it's always fun to start something new, but, um, I, you know, the Arnold stuff is by far the, the most successful thing I've ever done, and, and people really wanted that, so I was, it was absolutely, I would drop, uh, you know, the other stuff I was doing so that I could get the Jungle movie made. That was, a, that was really cool that we got that chance. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Um, I want to discuss um, some things about the the Jungle movie. I, I know you mentioned briefly about like going through all the drafts, and I did read uh, your Reddit interview from a few months ago discussing about some of the things that Nickelodeon wanted and Nickelodeon, um, you know, helped with. Uh, but the one thing that really interested me when I looked at it was that the outcome of Arnold's parents would have been a lot more darker. Oh, yeah. Originally, uh, when I uh, set out to write it in the first place, I was writing it with Steve uh, Vixton. And Steve felt strongly that um, it would be bogus for Arnold's parents to still be alive since they'd been missing and he he was nine now. And I was like, well, you're right. It is weird that they would have to either be like in a coma or dead or something. (laughs) And Steve thought the most realistic way to go would be to have them be dead. And, uh, you know, we wrote many drafts trying to do it that way. And I, I think that was great that, uh, in fact, that 10 or 15 years went by because by the time 15 years had gone by, it was clear to me. I was like, oh, the hell with that, man. I'm going to wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm not going to have him be dead. I'm going to yeah, wake him yeah. up. And I, I think that's actually kind of cool because in a way, 
they were dead for a while in my mind because that was what we were writing and and uh it's funny to think that after all these years i just decided no they're not dead they're, they're asleep yeah, and I guess it kind of makes sense because when you first see them in the jungle movie and they're falling asleep and you see like some sort of grayness in them, I, I kind of feel, see like the green eyed people as sort of this mysticism, like, you know, the children never grew old and the adults still looked in their youthful ways, even though it's been so long. And Miles and Stella have been laying down like they were literally dead. I remember when I first saw it with Aaron, I was like, oh my gosh, are they dead? And then they were like, oh no, they've been sleeping for all this uh, time. And then I rewatched it just yesterday and I was like, okay. I can definitely see, you know, um, the correlation of maybe Miles and Stella were essentially, you know, dead. But, you know, with the sleeping sickness, they were able to rise back up again because you saw yeah. the color in their cheeks and they had a little bit more energy again. Yeah, yeah. That was great. That was super fun. The, the uh, That sequence was uh, boarded by Raimi, Muskies, and uh, he just, he, he totally pours his heart into that stuff i, I thought it was it's, it's so well acted the way it's drawn and uh issues like that like having the parents look dead and to have people watching briefly think that they could be dead and they're all you know crying and it's all this it's really sad and then to be able to do the bit where their color came back into their faces i can remember when we we spent a week uh color correcting the the film and and doing things like that it was really fun yeah um, I, I'm also, um, you know, and uh, I was listening to my friends, uh, Casey and Ashley from the Friday Night Nicktoons podcast when discussing about how uh, when, you know, in the end, when Arnold's parents decide to, you know, follow him to school and, you know, they want to catch up with him in his life. Um, my friend Casey brought up a very interesting point about how. Um, you know, for the most part, um, Arnold seems to be like a very independent kid. You know, he helps his parents collect rent. He does his own laundry. He goes to school by himself and he comes home late at night and his grandparents don't really worry too much about him. And, you know, if there ever was a season six, which, you know, hopefully we'll wait and, you know, see what happens. But, um, I've, you know, they've always, they, they were talking about like, you know, if, if season six were to happen, it would be interesting to see, you know, Arnold's dynamic with his parents. Like would, you know, he possibly get along with them because it, it, you yeah. know, it's true that they've been gone for a long time and they don't know yeah. really well about their son who's mostly independent and at the same time yeah. you know Arnold who's been wanting to know about you know where's my parents where have you been all this time so I'm actually yeah, interested exactly about right. that that's a really good point because uh, there's a, that, that is so loaded to wake up mom and dad and bring them home for the future of the series because it's a whole new world and and the, all those points you made uh, are that, that's the kind of stuff we were talking about when uh, we made it because uh, he he goes and wakes up his parents and then all of a sudden this big hole that he's always had uh, is is filled you know he's never had his parents and he's always wanted them and it's been kind of the undercurrent of the whole series and so to have him get everything he wants wouldn't that kind of end all of his problems and he, he wouldn't be the little kind of Buddha anymore. But, <laughs> but we, we thought, no, this will be cool. He'll bring them back, but they'll be kind of, they're a little bit damaged goods. They've been asleep for 10 years and they've kind of, they're, they're, they're waking up and you know, they're sort of fish out of water. And so we thought it'd be funny if the parents were a little out of it. And so that's why we had uh, them invite him to the, <laughs> whatever the rainforest exhibit. And he's like, uh, it's the first day of school. And they're like, Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, so we made him a little bit out of it. And, um, and then that they follow him to school. They're like, they're like kids. And so, um, I thought that would be the try to reinforce that he brought his parents home, but it's not going to be, it's going to be a, a new kind of normal. <laughs> and it might, I, the way I would try to do it was make Arnold be the, uh, the still be the adult in the boarding house and grandma grandpa mom and dad are all sort of childlike like the borders are too yeah shout outs to casey for bringing up that very interesting uh conversation by the way when i was watching the credits i saw that there were you know two new writers in addition to joseph purdy whom you know you've worked alongside with for a long time how easy or how difficult was it to not only bring in you know the old people who formerly worked on the show but also some new blood in you know who grew up with the show and maybe had their own ideas yeah it was a, a really uh cool aspect of the the assignment basically 
I pitched the idea of doing the Jungle movie to Nickelodeon, and they said, great. And they, they said, we really encourage you to uh, use the people we have here at Nickelodeon. There's a whole new generation of writers and artists at Nick who grew up on the show. You know, it's that amazing phenomenon. I really think that's partly why the Jungle movie even got made was there was enough people at Nick who had been nine-year-olds when Hey Arnold came out that are now out there working. And they're like, why don't you guys do more Hey Arnold? And so <laughs> that that was the case with Justin Charlebois and Laura Srebny, who were the two, you know, kind of next generation writers on the, on the movie. And we interviewed that Nick really said, we want you to mix it up. I said, well, come on, I've got Joe Purdy here. You know, the two of us <laughs> wrote <laughs> the series and they said, yeah, but you know, why don't you add a couple more writers and which we were happy to do. And, uh, in interviewing all the writers, Laura and Justin both, what was going on was they had an encyclopedic knowledge of Hey Arnold, you know? They both really knew the series. They'd watched it intently, you know, and retained so much uh, information that it was really kind of cool. And we, we had about eight of us met for like a three-day weekend and, and to break the story in the first place. And there were several uh, uh, older uh, school Arnold writers and just a couple other writer friends I'd made in the last few years and so the, the it was cool to have uh, the, the kind of uh, fresh eyes and fresh take on the story so they were great it was great to have those people oh great that's fantastic especially for people who know about hey arnold inside and out they're able to bring in um uh, a knowledge and a critique to arnold that maybe somebody who worked on the show may or may not ha even have it's cool you're right it's a, the point of view is, is so different when you think about those of us that were making it in the first place and those that were literally absorbing like pigeon man you know by the way it was the 22nd anniversary of pigeon man the other day <laughs> but um uh joe purdy wrote that was his first script when joe came in to write for us he came in with Pigeon Man. And so I remember writing that with him very well. And uh, I just think it's cool that the, you know, the people who were around in the first place are still in. They're still in on it. It's cool. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Was there anybody that you wanted to have on the team but couldn't because they were hard to, you know, they were hard to yeah. track or? Yeah. People, people were busy working on other stuff. I had, you know, the the people who directed on the series, they, you know, they've all got shows of their own now. But sure. uh, I remember uh, Tuck Tucker, uh, who was huge, huge, huge on the Hey Arnold, the series and the first movie. Tuck, you know, like the main artist, you know, he, his Helgas are are the definitive Helgas. And so anyway, you know, Tuck is a, a professor in Virginia now. Oh, nice. And so he, he was not available. But yeah. I, that's one that I would have loved to have had. Yeah, absolutely. I can, yeah, definitely. And um, I know that um, for uh, a lot of people who've seen the movie, you know, they really enjoy it. And, you know, they want to see a season six. And they, you know, they want to, you know, know about what happens with Arnold and Helga's relationship and with Arnold's parents. And with everything that, you know, Nickelodeon has been going through with the changes, like Brian Robbins becoming president. And there's a new mm -hmm. vice president of, um, you know, animation of the animation department and all yeah. that stuff. So... Um, like, do you know if maybe that's going to kind of change in terms of your plans of having a season six or have, or maybe, you know, maybe it's been picked up and we don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what's going on. They're over there deciding to pick it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I'm going to meet, I'm meeting with, uh, with Ramsey next week. I'll nice. go ask him what's up. Cool. Cool. Well, uh, fingers crossed. Totally. Always. Absolutely. Always. Hope. Yes, hope. <laughs> Never lose hope. Never lose hope. Yeah, I'm actually curious about when I was watching, um, you know, the Jungle movie, and then I was watching the Journal, and I was watching Parents' Day, and you know, there was like talks about, you know, La Corazón, about the the Green Eye People's sacred relic, and about how, um, you know, it was supposed to help spread the um, the the cure for the Green Eyes, um, and you know, the Miles and Stella actually retrieved it back from La Sombra, and you know, he was taking it. Um, is there was there any other like um, was there any other purpose of La Corazón, or was it just a sacred relic to the Green Eyes right before it was used to spread the cure? Um, I think that uh, it was always in the story that there would be uh, like a, a, a like a secret, you know, key to a lock, you know. Yeah. And um, the idea of it becoming a heart shaped like magical charm, you know, 
uh, that actually was the same uh, size and shape as uh, Helga's locket. I think I was talking about the ideas for the jungle movie with my kids, Matt and Katie. And I think the three was talking about it. We sort of hatched that idea of like, what if, what if uh, it gets lost and then Helga has to use her own locket to do what this magical thing was. And I, the, the uh, idea to me is that like the, the green eyes are so uh, magical that they've had this prophecy for centuries and that, even Helga getting that locket as a kid was sort of meant to finally bring that locket to take the place of the cores on the went over the cliff. So and it was so, so it was essentially fate that, you know, eventually this yeah, is going to happen. All fated. And like Brainy and Helga and Arnold and the other kids are all kind of caught up in this uh, long prophesied series of events. I just like that kind of idea that stuff is like meant to happen when she when she tears up the locket and throws it overboard. It's like no, you know, she's going to need to take that up there and and unlock the the, the giant rain machine. It's <laughs> <laughs> now I'm actually curious. I mean, did Arnold's parents knew about the prophecy like when they went back to? Um... I, I guess so. You could pro- you could argue that because they um, they were up there. They could read the they could read the uh, hieroglyphs on the wall. So dad and mom could have known that that was prophesied to happen they were gonna make the cure they were in the middle of it but they they got the sleeping sickness and as if like they almost were gonna do it but they you know then they fell asleep yeah I, I was thinking that you know when i saw the um, the prophecy that you know arnold was the chosen one and he was going to you know be the one to open up the lock to spread the cure i was thinking that maybe as soon as they were done with the cure that there could have been a chance that they would have came back for arnold and maybe you know raised him with the green eyes and then one day yeah. he would have done the prophecy yeah, exactly. but they... it unfortunately was too late yeah that, exactly <laughs> they fell asleep instead yeah, and since the green eyes was very, and since the green eyes were so private, you know, and, and you know, very sketchy with revealing, um, you know, their location and you know, right. trusting anybody, then you know, they were pretty much stuck with their conundrum until you know, in a kind of crazy way, La Sombra actually helped them out. Yeah, everybody, exactly. It's one of those things where everybody was part of the prophecy, whether they did uh, good or or evil, for sure. That that was the kind of stuff we were. It's really funny these. These beats we're talking about, literally, we figured out only when we were back, you know, writing the Jungle movie this time, for sure. I feel like we had other things happen in the other versions. And in this one, you know, the idea of like, you know, when, who knows what, when, you know, those, those kind of things came up when we were making this version. And um, anyway, that was my kind of backstory. I always, I thought that was what was going on, that they were all, kind of why Arnold and Helga are our soulmates because they're just all caught up in this big uh kind of larger story and then so that was why all that happened because it was you know all prophecy yeah yeah and i'm you know if a, if a season six were to happen have you already gotten ideas for what you would like to write for a season six or you're just still thinking of them <laughs> yeah totally we we just we were just joking about it saying this season would is we could just write it really quick because uh we've been talking about all these different stories that we would do and they're really you know part of it was like in in 15 years i've thought of a lot of things that would be funny to happen and and you know all, we've got all these characters and so uh i would for sure move the arnold and helga thing forward and just kind of do uh, there's a lot of characters if you look at the <laughs> coming back to the um ultimate collection if you look at that cover that i made it's got the 12 kids the the little you know essential Hey Arnold squad of kids and uh, those are I really do love those characters and we you know we developed the new look for all of them for the jungle movie and it's sort of like we we're really designing everybody to kind of get them up to the go to the sixth grade and um, I, I just like it was really fun to work with those characters and they go throughout that story I want to do I want to do stories about all those characters you know, I would love to see you know what the other characters are up to if there happens to be a season six like I like to see Phoebe and Gerald's relationship. I like to see, you know, what happens to, like, Big Bob, because I, I did remember reading right. in an interview that, you know, the alternative ending would have been hipsters would have been crowding off to the Beeper uh, Emporium because hip, uh, because um, <laughs> beepers are cool again. Yeah, that's actually, exactly, that was another, that's another uh, beat of story that, 
that we developed pretty pretty far and it's not it barely it's not even in uh you know there's only a hint of of the uh, gentrification of arnold's neighborhood and you know the arrival of hipsters and, and, but we that was the plan big bob has a comeback because the the locals have it's become uh, kind of cool and ironic to have a have a beeper. So all of a sudden, Bob sees back. I, I'm I'm not even joking when I say this, Craig. But I'm going back to school for broadcast for a broadcast journalism degree, and uh, on um, orientation week, they were giving away fanny packs, and the college kids were excited to get them. <laughs> I am not joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, um, I can understand. Yeah, I, I would love. Yeah, that, that would be a great, you know, story to like flesh out, especially you know with you know how the the Patakis got really poor and you know how right. they ended up all living in happened. them. It's really funny that the, these were all things that we were, um, you know, when we got back. God, now it's been like that was like three years ago when we got back and and got back into production and started doing the art and working on the stories for the script. That that whole you know the Patakis. You know, being on the on the down on their luck was a whole subplot that we were like, yeah, it would, we'd work that all out. So yeah, it's absolutely the, it, the and it was really designed to be that way too. The uh, the Jungle movie was meant to show uh, the reboot, so you could just picture it like when they go to you know, at the end of the episode, they're starting the first day of school. So it's clearly meant to be like an end. And then, and then, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. It's like a bookend, <laughs> but at the same time, it's open for possibilities. Yeah. Yeah, we really do. We have we had a million stories. We were totally like, oh god, yeah, we could write the, just sit down and assign all these out and write the whole season. <laughs> yeah, um, those are the days, man. With all those years, five years in a row, they'd start us January first of the year to make twenty more half hours. That went five seasons in a row. So that was, you know, those were good old times. Six years, really, six or seven for me, just steadily, you know, putting all those through post. Never stopped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I, I know that. But I'm sure that once you see the final product and seeing everybody's reaction to it, it's it's well worth it. And Totally. Man, that's so true. The people's reaction to the Jungle movie made me so happy. They, they were overwhelmingly into it. And it really made me feel incredibly happy. Yeah. I mean, like all the positive posts, fan art... <laughs> Um, you know, you know, animated music videos, uh, reaction yeah. videos that you know of everybody just going absolutely crazy over it. Super cool! It was really fun. It was fun to feel the power too. You know, I've been uh, making uh, animation all these years since Hey Arnold, but it was cool to kind of be back and have feel the power of Nickelodeon to promote stuff. And it wasn't really Nick so much that was kind of doing the hype. It was um, uh, the Splat that was uh, showing Arnold every night and um, had a bunch of stuff to kind of build up to it. So it wasn't Nickelodeon, main Nickelodeon so much as the Splat that was into it, but I really loved, God, we, we went into New York and we did, you know, we shot stuff with them and they, they made a bunch of content. The the whole, you know, uh, Nick Online people, the, the social media people, they're great. They have really funny ideas. It's cool to work with uh, creatives at Nick who, same deal, they were kids watching it when they were nine when Arnold first came out and now they're you know head of department in uh, at Nickelodeon and yeah. they, they love they love the Arnold and they had really cool ideas or similar to myself in which you know they were introduced to Arnold with the Sesame Street shorts yeah but uh, I, I'm really happy to know that you are, you know, basking in the, um, the positivity of all of your fans, Craig, because I know that you've worked really hard on, you know, this, uh, all of your projects throughout these years and finally getting to, you know, see everything coming in. Uh, I'm sure that you're really happy. Uh, I remember reading an yeah. article many years ago from... Um, you know, uh, Will McRobin, Chris Fiscardi's perspective on when they finally found out that uh, the Adventures of Pete and Pete had a fan base because, you know, uh-huh. they they didn't know that um, you know that people liked the show. They they were always told by Nickelodeon, oh, you know, there there wasn't as much views, blah blah blah, and you know they just quickly canceled it and. Then, like, 20 years later, when they did the reunion, there was, like, bunches of people came, coming in. Like, the whole place was sold out. And then there were, like, a whole bunch of people singing the songs and quoting right. the lines. They did those theatrical, uh, you know, Q&As. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
They must have shown episodes too. I bet it was great. Oh yeah, I, they they showed like one episode, and you know uh, Toby Huss, who played as Artie, like he did his lines, and uh, the the band Polaris performed. It was like it was insane. And then they were like yeah. giving this wonderful speech about how you know if you were to tell me that. 20 years ago, we would have a fan base. I would have said that you were nuts. We were just writing things that were nostalgic to us, but now our nostalgia is your nostalgia, and we couldn't be any more appreciative. Wow, cool. Yeah, they're great guys. Both those guys are great. Yeah. Uh, I've had Will on the show uh, a few years ago. He's wonderful. And, yeah, um, yeah I'm just I'm just really happy that you're finally getting, you know, to see that, even though that uh, you're one of the very few people that I knew who actually interacted with the fans, like, back in forums in the late 90s. So you were already <laughs> interacting with the fans and answering their questions and all that. So, I mean, it, it was different then, but I'm sure with uh, social media becoming a lot more open, uh, I'm sure that, you know, you get bombarded with, like, a whole bunch of cool fan art on Facebook and Instagram. So, yeah, it must yeah, be surreal yeah. for you. Yeah, there, it's, it is. There's a there's a constant, yeah, dialogue between me and people who love Hey Arnold. And, and I see, yeah, you're right, I see art posted all the time. And it's really fun. It's just, it just kind of, it just it demonstrates how the characters are alive and, and just living in everybody's heads. So that's what could be more gratifying than that. It's incredibly cool to think that people have a kind of a, so you know, kids have a, kids grow up having a kind of a virtual uh, friendship with uh, your cartoon characters. <laughs> it's uh, it's cool. I, you know, they take on a life. Yeah, definitely. Helga, Helga seems really real to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also for the um, creators out there, you know, something like Hey Arnold would inspire them to create their own shows and to create their own projects, and they'll cite you as an influence, which I'm sure that, you know, also really um, makes you appreciative of, you know, something that you were able to make, able to stand the test of time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's great. It's it's true. Uh, when the, the kids grow up... Uh, you know, get careers, become professionals. They, they, you know, people become writers. They write really eloquent uh, descriptions of, of what it meant to them. And I go, oh my God, that's exactly what I wanted it to do. You know, I was thinking about like episodes where someone got the message and they say it back. I remember having these arguments with our execs at Nickelodeon saying, no, no, you know, kids are going to think this. And they go, what are you talking about? And we'd, we'd, have to make our point like really well that that the, the effect it would have on kids and and they might not believe us and then you see 20 years later someone who's now an adult say all this stuff was what i got out of it i love it it's incredibly cool it's like it vindicates what i was saying when i was arguing with my uh, with my bosses you know it's yeah, like yeah. no kids kids are gonna see it this way you know like i i, I had a lot of opinions about uh like what like, like they were like, who's Arnold? You know, when, who is this guy? Tell me who he is. I said, look, Helga's going to be the one who explains who Arnold is because she's such a huge fan, and she's going to she's going to articulate. Arnold can just sit there and be quiet, and Helga can do the talking and and say, oh, he's the most awesome creature you know <laughs> that ever lived. I said, this is going to work, man. Kids are going to believe Helga because she's so uh, she's so intense, you know, and smart. And, and then uh, everyone will think Arnold's cool. And I actually think that that works. But you know what I mean? When you're first kind of arguing that stuff, people are like, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, after the Jungle movie came out, there's been a lot of like analysis articles online and videos discussing about like what makes Ar Hey Arnold work in this day and age, about the fact that they... T they they took kids seriously like it wasn't sugarcoated saying like everything's going to be sunshine and rainbows you know people have problems people have issues and they have to learn to deal with it and if they if it doesn't get solved then that's okay that's just life that's true exactly yeah so um yeah I, once again i thank you very much for coming on by craig i, I really do appreciate um, you guesting on our show and helping promote the Hey Arnold Ultimate Collection, which is coming out on DVD. Hopefully there will be a Blu-ray release of it really soon. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. 
So, yes, if you are interested in picking it up, I'm sure you can find it in your local retail stores or online. So if you do not have the complete collection, which consists of both of the movies, all 100 episodes, the pilot, the first claymation short, and some cool behind-the-scenes stuff, then, yeah, I, I would say that definitely do, um, you know, give it a... Uh, do, 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 do give it a buy. I'm sure it'll be well worth it. And, you know, who knows? Maybe it'll show Nickelodeon that, hey, people want this stuff. So maybe it'll get us a season six. Who knows? Exactly. If they sell one billion copies, we, we're guaranteed a season six. Yes, uh, for all one seventh of the population, get to buying. So get out there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, it's I, a door buster. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Craig. You have yourself a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Bye. All right. See you, everybody. Bye. <laughs>